Oh, what a long night. What you guys are about to see in the aquarium gallery is an absolute mess, but we've made some progress. I guess we should maybe start out here, show you what I mean. I have a bad habit of just throwing things out the door, worrying about them later. This might look familiar to you guys. It's the old filter for the 2000. Let's go have a peek. So like I said, uh, it's an absolute mess out here. Let me show you something else. More messes, more messes, more messes, more messes. <laughs> but we've got progress on the pond filtration. I was able to transfer the canister filter that was on the 2000 gallon aquarium over to the pond. Everything is looking good here. We'll update on the fish in a future video. However, as you can see, everything's just simply up and running. Pond is nice and healthy. Uh, more on this in a future video. Behind my hand is the secret fish. You guys will see this coming Sunday. <laughs> I can assure you they will not disappoint. Absolutely awesome. I can't wait to show you. Uh, I can barely walk. So nothing is done in here, so don't judge anything. I'll explain the best I can. <laughs> I know how awkward this looks. Uh, let's start off with the new canister you guys will remember that I just showed you the pond canister filter essentially I transferred the old one over to the pond and now we have this larger one the one on the pond is rated up for 2,000 gallon aquariums and this one here is for 4,000 aquariums and ponds of course uh, I'm not a huge fan of the price point but the very low maintenance essentially maintenance free is pretty awesome using this valve up here we can not only backwash the filter, which will, um, of course, clean the media within it, but we can also do water changes at the same time. Really simple. Uh, we're running an aqua ultraviolet UV sterilizer. I think that's a 25 or 40 watt. I forget what it is, actually. Uh, the same company makes this. We've got a Vectra L1 by Ecotech. Love these pumps. Completely powerful. I do have a couple of small leaks. Uh, of course, this is to be expected when setting up so much plumbing and doing such a big move. I was, you know, it just happens. There's just very tiny ones. One on here, for example, uh, on this valve. I'll fix it. The inline heater or the uh, in-floor heating is now in this racking system. That's what heats the 2,000 gallon aquarium underneath the concrete. And then, of course, the actual rack. Uh, now, this rack was on sale for like 120 bucks. Each rack will hold about 2,000 pounds. Uh, we have a 120 gallon sump down below. This is what runs the 375 gallon. Uh, let's start back over here. You guys will remember that we had that big fluidized filter here with a bunch of media in it. All that fluidized media is cycled. I put it in here for now until I get the media for this. And then the media in here is gonna go in these barrels, uh, which we'll come back to in a moment. All of that ceramic media is now jammed in here. Uh, literally jammed in there. Tons of biological filtration though. Uh, this is the 375 gallon filter, 2000 gallon. These two are going to be for the 2000 gallon aquarium. This is going to be for Frank's tank. Not sure how I want to set this up, but this is going to be a fluidized chamber. I'm not sure if I'm going to deliver the, the water through the bottom or through the top. If I do through the top, that means uh, the water is just going to splash down on the media, which is going to be completely fluidized. It'll drain out the side here into this barrel, and then of course overflow the top and back to the 2000. Or we could pump the water up through it, not need an air stone to fluidize it, and use the jets of the water pump instead, rising up through it. Water then overflows into this, this barrel and down through the bottom and out, using this for biological media as well, and uh, maybe even a settling chamber. I'm gonna take my time on these because I don't know how I wanna do it. But in order to connect these barrels, I'll be using these uni seals here. It's like a bulkhead basically. Uh, drill a four inch hole inside of uh, the barrel and these will allow you to push pipe through it creating its seal as it becomes tighter. We also got some two inch bulkheads just in case with these really cool strainers on it. Uh, just gathering supplies making sure that I can do whatever I need to do. That method of filtration with the barrels might look familiar though if you go ahead and watch my video on how I built my 540 gallon aquarium. I did barrel filtration then as well. Very cheap, very efficient, and very powerful method of filtration. 
be connecting them with a black uh, ABS pipe, which essentially is going to color match. Color matching isn't a big deal for me, but I'm using black and gray in there, so I guess it would kind of look good. And on the topic of ABS, a lot of people say you can't use ABS for aquariums because it's toxic, which I always thought was kind of weird because aren't bulkheads made of ABS? If you read the codes on your plumbing, whether it's PVC or ABS, there's gonna be an ASTM number, which essentially, if you Google it, you can tell, uh, it'll tell you exactly what that pipe was meant for and if how it's rated, whether it's for potable water, potable water or not. Don't pay attention to the, the all uh, blanketing statement of all ABS isn't safe for your aquariums. Simply not true. So switching all of this out last night took about, mm, I don't know, about six to eight hours. It was pretty difficult. I had to rip out the entire room here, uh, switch out all the plumbing, get the rack built in here, and of course, get the sump set back up. These are just sitting there. This isn't their final position. I still have so much more to do, including cleaning up the wires, hooking up the battery backups, which are actually just kind of sitting down here. This means that if the power ever goes out here and I don't get my generator hooked up fast enough, which I just plug into here, and it takes the entire building off the grid, I can run it for as long as the generator will. That means depending on how much equipment I put through these, uh, I'll be able to run them for about 12 hours, uh, the pumps on low power modes. Uh, so I'm pretty safe. I think I'm gonna mount those uh, battery backups to this wall as well as the controllers, which are all just jammed back here. And there's a power strip way in the back there. Absolute mess, but you get the idea. Work in progress. Bottom line was get everything hooked up and running. These are the life support systems. Get them running. Worry about the, the, the smaller stuff later. This is the next project I gotta worry about. Again, I'll take my time with that. Other than that, guys, though, clearly I've got a lot of catching up to do in, in terms of cleaning and whatnot in order to move forward with other projects I want to tackle. In the meantime, if you're excited about the new surprise fish or the secret fish, that video will be out this coming Sunday. I know many of you are also gonna have questions about the shark eggs. That'll probably be out next Tuesday or some point next week. Uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a full update and show you what I'm going to be doing and what has happened by that time. So if you don't want to miss those, make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed already. While I have you, I should probably also mention that uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. But last night I was doing stories uh, on there. I think I did maybe 20 or 30 of them of like behind the scenes and just like what I was up to. And Frank made it a couple appearances and we kind of made fun of him. So if you're not following me on there, make sure that you do because I'm really enjoying those little stories and having fun with you guys. And also, sorry for such a short video today. I don't have a ton of time to do, be doing a ton of filming or editing, but eh, quick update.